I guess we can jump back to one thing we skipped over, which is immutability. Yeah, yeah, that's what we're talking about. I I've spoken to I, I believe the maintainer of vanilla OS has a problem with the term. A bunch of immutable distro maintainers have a problem with the term immutable distro. Right. You're not really you know, you don't call you blue a distro, but even so, you're still working in this immutable distro yeah. space. Yeah, it definitely competes with distros, yeah, yeah, yeah. I would say. Yeah. What yeah. do you what do you think of the term immutable? And if you don't like the term, do you think there's something better that could, you know, fit yeah. in that place? I use image based. Mm -hmm. Um, the actual, the person that, uh, Colin Walters, the, one of the authors of RPM OS tree, how this happened is I had known him for a long time. Mm -hmm. This is a cool story. Okay. So I have to tell it. Um, and he was a Debian maintainer a very long time ago. And I was a Debian and Ubuntu user or whatever. So he had been an Ubuntu maintainer, mm -hmm. um, uh, indirectly. I think he had a few uploads. I'm not sure, but he was a, he was a Debian maintainer. Um, and then he ended up at some point. Uh, working for Red Hat and then Fedora Core OS and stuff eventually. So he's in that two comma club that's like, you know, Ubuntu, Debian, and Fedora, right? Like very few people in that club, right? It, it, open source is large, mm -hmm. right? But it's not that large. There are people who've worked for all the distros, right? That's why um, users tend to think of it as a competition. And when mm -hmm. you flame when my friends work, even though they work for another company, like we get kind of upset about it, right? That's why I'm allowed to flame Canonical, but you're not. <laughs> So, um, so what was I saying? Oh, so yes. this past October, he was coming to his first KubeCon, the Kubernetes conference, which was in Detroit because I live in Ann Arbor. Mm -hmm. And we went, we went to breakfast and I had started using Silver Blue and I had Ublue, right? Yep, yep. Uh, but it was like the crappy one. Um, I had I didn't know about this OCI thing or whatever. And I always thought, eh, this is the best going to be, whatever. It works for me, you know? And it, I sat there and he had sent me some spec nine months before and i just didn't understand any of it you know but what that was is the thing that would this helps up that's the booting off the oci container thing that's like literally the thing that started this project mm -hmm. and so we sat there and he's explaining all this to me and i'm just like mind blown I, I don't think i even ate my omelet i'm you know i just like listened to him or whatever and so he's explaining to it at the very end um i was like oh i can't wait to redo my my Ubuntu image. I used to call it Ubuntu, mm -hmm. uh, but you, once it started working, I was like, someone's going to want to use this. I know this. So I can't call it Ubuntu. So I renamed it to Bluefin, mm -hmm. which is the name of the office building, Canonical's office building in London. So I had to, all my stuff has to have little Easter eggs because mm -hmm. open source, that's what it's about. And Bluefin's like a cool name. You yeah, know? it is. Blue, silver blue. You know, the domain's expensive. I know because I'm trying to get it. <laughs> um <laughs> And then he, I was like, man, I'm going to redo my thing. I was like, hey, Colin, if you're just serving things out of a registry and all you need is Podman, you don't, you don't think I can build and host this whole thing on GitHub, do you? And he leaned over and he, all my machines have been like this for the past two months. <laughs> and I, as soon as he left, I went, you know, I went back to my booth duty or whatever. And in my brain, I was figuring out how I'm going to do this. Uh, and then later that weekend, um, I hung out with my friends, Marco Cheppi, him and I started ask Ubuntu together. One of the cooler thing projects I helped, I helped work on and Wayne Witzel. And we kind of planned it out. You know, they kind of conceptually told me what to do. And then I went on Fedora discord said, Hey, I think this might work. Right. So he has a paper roundabout way to answer your question. <laughs> he has a paper on, on terms. Uh huh. But he's really – he's like a nerd, man. So, like, his term is anti-hysterist systems. Oh, which, no, I've, I have read this. Yeah. Yeah, yeah no. so paper, it is, if you look at the – there's a list called awesome-immutable. That's mm. how I started, actually. I was like, look, I'm not smart enough to make any of this, but at least I can write stuff down because I know Richard Brown as well. I got stuck – so this all ties in back to Kubernetes. Mm. Two years ago, I got stuck in the back of a bus going to the Kubernetes party and – we were just in the back of the bus and he's explaining all of this stuff to me. Cause he's like kind of a God he's uh, been preaching about this stuff for so long that people forget. Immutable, you know, reprovisionable anti-hysteresis. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's a little heady. 
on that. Uh, stuff. It is fully managed, image based, reprovisionable, and has anti hysteresis properties and links to a Wikipedia article about hysteresis because yeah. nobody reading this knows what the. Yeah, and if you keep means. digging, you, you end up in distributed systems papers and you know, it's all sorts of games. I, I, I ended up on game theory today. <laughs> I, you know, I mean, I've had some Wikipedia spelunking, but geez, you know, I'm just trying to get my host name changed on my mm -hmm. mutable system. How do I end up here? <laughs> uh, so he goes with uh, image based sounds good to me. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Because for a few reasons, especially with this method specifically is um, it's a container image. Mm -hmm. right? Like that is a common term that people understand. So when I go back to people that don't even run Linux desktops and I say, yeah, we boot off a we boot off a Docker image. They kind of know exactly what we're talking about. They mm -hmm. they go directly to cool. I didn't know people were doing that. Mm -hmm. You know, Marco hasn't run a Linux desktop in eight years or something, right? But he was able to work on a lot of the stuff in Ublue because same stuff, you know. And that's that's part of that economic argument that I'm trying to make. Mm 